okay, I'm doing another review. Two reviews in one day. The Rocket Burst Pro Air. Got this at Best Buy as well. Same with my Aerox 3. Let me just push that out of the way. So, yeah, my experience with this mouse has been pretty mixed. So, we'll get into it now. So, Rocket Burst Pro Air. The shape. It's the same as the old Burst Pro Air. Some people say it's like an XM1R. I haven't tried that, so I do not know. But the shape works pretty well for me, especially for claw. One complaint I have with it is it's kind of short. It's it's almost as short as like my Starlight, even. But it's kind of comparable to my Modelo Minus. But it's just so wide. Like, it makes it really hard to get a good grip on it because it's just wide. But honestly, if I claw like this and or relax claw, it's pretty good. Uh, fingertip just, it kind of works, I guess, and, I mean, you can kind of palm grip, but I'm not doing that, so, yeah, next is the, actually, let me go into the shape a bit more, so, yeah, honestly, the shape is usable, I guess, it's not my favorite, but I know some people who really like the Burst Pro Air shape, oh god, I gotta sneeze, uh, uh, uh continuing on with the review, um, um, the shape is, uh, pretty good I guess but if you relax claw this will probably be a mouse for you but honestly if you do like fingertip grip or something then this shape is pretty unique since it's really short but wide so if you use a pretty relaxed claw grip like this then I think you'll be fine oh no this review is becoming a mess I gotta sneeze <coughs> okay the build quality um no creaking no flexing or no rattling or anything because the build quality of my comb pro air was just awful like it just sucks like it just flex is so hard even when i do on the top on the sides on the bottom it just and there's so much rattling from the left and right clicks like it's just awful so yeah i don't know because i some people say that the rocket comb pro air is much is much better built than I, my copy is, but yeah, honestly, the Burst Pro Air is much better in, like, every single way for build quality, but yeah, I've heard that the Comb Pro Air has pretty good film quality, so I think I just got a really bad unit because I actually ordered from Amazon. Why would I do that? <coughs> Next is the, um, switches. So the switches are the, are the Rocket Opticals, and they have gotten so much better. So like this, for the sound test. So yeah, they're pretty nice. Um, honestly, they are pretty good if you want a optical switch. They're much better than the Cone Pro Air. Here's the sound test. They're a lot less dull and have more feedback, I guess. <coughs> but yeah, they aren't as good as something like the Viper V2 Pro. But yeah, I would say they're around the same as the uh, Razer Optical V2s that are on the Viper Ultimate. So yeah, honestly, I can i kind of like the switches and they are very good performing as well no input lag since they are optical next is the weight the weight is 80 grams this is the very controversial thing is it is a brick and i'm not being over dramatic or anything because the old wired version was 69 grams which is very nice but and they changed it to 80 grams because you're seeing mice like the Razer Viper V2 Pro and the XM2W, which are just trying to lower the weight and go wireless. But, like, this is just making the weight bigger. And I think these are just focusing on RGB. And honestly, I, I understand why they would do that, because RGB is popular. But, yeah, honestly, it's kind of annoying. And 80 grams isn't that big of a deal. We were all using the original G Pro wireless in, like, 2019, I guess. But yeah, <coughs> next is the side buttons. Side buttons are pretty good. Honestly, some com I was about to say something, but then sound test. So yeah, honestly, some people say that the uh, side buttons have gotten a bit heavier. Haven't tried the original Burst Pro, so I would not know. Next is the scroll wheel. Uh, I probably should go into the side buttons a bit more. They're really nice positioning. Position, um, they are very big and uh, pretty 
chunky and have a pretty good feedback. Honestly, they're not too heavy for me. Something that's a bit too heavy for me is uh, the HyperX Pulse Fire Haste ones. But they have broken a little bit now. So yeah, honestly, they're pretty good. Um, I would say that they're okay for spamming. And yeah, they are a very good position, as I said before. Scroll wheel. Scroll wheel is very light, very nice. Rocket is known for making some very good scroll wheels, especially on the KPA. So yeah, uh, scroll wheel is very nice, very tactile steps while being not too obnoxiously loud. Next is the texture. So the texture on the sides is kind of like the, um, I don't know, it's very similar to the Code Pro Airs texture on the sides, but on the top it's kind of different. It's very rubberized on the top. I don't know if it's meant for, like, Minecraft drag clicking or something, because I know Rocket is known for that. I mean, Rocket is known for that. Uh, yeah. So, next is the... You know, I probably should just go into the texture a bit more. So, the texture is fine. There's no grips in the box or anything, so... It's very nice if you want to just have a good grip on it. It's not slippery. Like, a, what's a slippery mask? Um, the Starlight Pro. It's much better than that. So yeah, honestly, Rocket makes some pretty good coating, coatings and textures. So yeah, very, very good uh, texture for this. Next is the sensor. The sensor, I believe, is the Rocket Owl Eye sensor, which is based off of 3389. I'm not sure about that, though. I'm not the best at sensors, but I believe it's a 3389. And it performs really well. No tracking. No, um, I believe you. T I believe you gotta turn off acceleration in the software. I'm not sure. The software is trash, though. It's like really badly built. So, um, honestly, I don't like having the software and stuff. But, uh, you and also there's debounce time in the software as well. So that if you want to get the fastest input latency, then you can get zero debounce time. But be warned of double data. So yeah, next is the, um, I forgot to go into, oh my god, I keep skipping so many things in this review, I'm a horrible reviewer, um, the DPI, um, 93,000, so it's slightly better, uh, yeah, I believe it's a 3389, I believe, I don't, I don't think I've tried any other mice with a 3389, so I don't really have much to go off of here, but, um, yeah, it's a pretty good, uh, sensor, and it is very well performing as well. So, next is the skates. So, the skates are very good for stock skates, and they are the best that I've tried. Uh, oh, God, my grammar in this mouse review. Mouse reviews ruin my grammar. So, yeah, they're very similar to the Steel Series skates, but I would say it's a little bit better, and, um, they are... Uh, very similar to the HyperX Pulse Fire Haze skates as well. Honestly, they're very similar to Tiger Ice as well. Tiger Ice is one of my favorite aftermarket sc stock skates. So, yeah, I really enjoy these. And, yeah, they aren't very scratchy, but on the Artisan, he admit, they pick up a lot of texture. So, you can really feel that texture when you're sh uh, s swiping across the pad. So, yeah, they play pretty fast as well. Honestly, these are my favorite stock skates that I've tried. Next is the battery life. Honestly, I haven't used the battery in life enough to um, the battery life enough to um, decide. But it does have Bluetooth on it, and I think the marketed battery life on here is for Bluetooth. But uh, two point four gigahertz mode seems fine, I guess, and USB C charging, so no issues with charging as well. And one thing to notice is the RGB on this mouse is just so good. It even shines through at the bottom. Like, what other mouse does that? Probably a lot of other mice. But that's beside the point. Um, price, $100. I would not pay $100 for this mouse. Like, when the KPA released at $130, yeah, it was worth it. Because it was, like, probably one of the only lightweight ergos beside, like, the Model D or something. But yeah, it is uh, pretty nice, um, especially for a hun uh, sale at a hundred. I mean, eighty dollars. But I hope this map goes on sale because it is not worth a hundred dollars. Because especially at the eighty gram weight, just 
just don't get it at a hundred dollars if it's at like fifty dollars because i saw um the cane 250 dollars that's um i haven't tried the cane but i think that's a good deal because i saw some reviews hyping it up so i may try it in the future looks pretty good but yeah um the price is very controversial as well especially because the original Blue Spear was $50 and was a very good competitor to the XM1R. And honestly, I wouldn't recommend buying this as well, unless you need the RGB light show, or you're just an enthusiast and want to collect more mice. So, yeah, that is pretty much my initial thoughts with the Burst Pro Air. Honestly, I would not recommend this mouse to anyone except for enthusiasts and RGB fanatics. So yeah, stay tuned for some more reviews. I have the Pulsar X Lite YouTube Mini coming. So yeah, I guess guess you can stay tuned for that if you want to. But yeah, uh, like and subscribe. And yeah, see you in the next review.